دیگه Amazing, you know. He, you know, I've had to convince him. I've had to convince him three or four times not to pack it in because nothing was happening. And I just said, what did I say? What was the words I said? We just need a little bit of luck. We just need that little bit of luck. Just we just need one shot, and um, we we got it. I mean. I was born to bring trouble wherever I may Heard a number 13 tattooed on my neck That ink starts to itch like on turn to red was born in the soul of misery and I never had me a name They just give me a number when I was young Got a long heartache I, I don't know, I, I can't really talk, it's just, I'm just so delighted. Just I couldn't be pitch. more pleased if it was me. You know, it's... Good afternoon everybody, welcome to Boxing Bonanza. I am joined by Chris Jenkins. How are you, Chris? I'm good, how are you, Bat? You alright? I am all good, I'm all good. So, finally, after all the talking and um, everything that's been going on, you've managed to nail the fight now. How are you feeling? You uh, buzzing? Yeah, I am. You know, at um, the end of the day, the fight fell through with Johnny Garden and the only fight I wanted next was my mandatory and my mandatory is Ben. So, yes, it's a better pay than what I've had in all my career and all the other fights, but it's still my mandatory. People think I'm just going for the money, but it's not. It's a mandatory that I want. That I, not only that, he's a big name as well, isn't he, for his dad. So, yeah. we're just going to wait now for the first bit, really. So the first bid are on the 14th of October. The fight needs to be um, announced before 2021. Is there any chance? Have you got any dates? Do you, do you know if it could be this year? Um, I'm hoping it's um, towards Christmas, like November. Uh, work out great for me. Uh, obviously, with this pandemic and stuff, sponsors went, so I've been grafting work-wise. Um, I've been back in gym now for the last two weeks, so... You know, I'd like to be back out mid mid November. Sounds good. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, you know, as long as I have a good eight to ten week camp, I'm happy. So you know, um, the purse bids. Can you just explain to people what what's going on in that in that area at the moment? Uh basically, from what I know, is when a purse bid comes. Is there's two rival promoters probably want to get her on. So you've got like, I'm signed with Frank Warren, um, Ben signed with Matchroom. So obviously, Frank will went on his show for me to have, you could say, the home advantage. And then you've got Eddie then, once on his show, for him to have the home advantage for his fighter. So it's basically, they'll say that a random, I say about 50 grand, they put a bid in. And then we split it between us. Um, but then whoever wins the bid, the fight will happen on their show. 
Because I know last time there was a bit of a uh, bit of headbutt in between Warren and Hearn, and yeah. Warren didn't want to take the fight. So what what's changed? What what changed there? Um, to be honest with you, mate, I don't know too much of it. Um, you know, Mo Pryor, my manager, him and then Gary do all the the shit, as I call it. I yeah. just fight. But, you know, I know they went to it. Um, an offer was made that I was happy with. Um, but obviously, the la- it's kind of like the last person to say yes or no was my promoter. He said no, so it didn't happen. I was gutted for because it would have been a career high payday for myself yeah. and a nice name on my record. Like um, obviously, it's great for the fans now that because this is uh, built up to be a cracker of a fight. What are you looking to implement in a fight to win? Is pure boxing going to be? You know, we've seen through many years of pure boxers beating brawlers. Is that the way forward? Yeah, you know, everyone knows me. I'm a good boxer. People I sparred. If I sparred with Danny Ball last Friday, he's 8-0 and won welterweight WBC national champion. And he's like, you know, he said, you've got to have a job and stuff. And, you know, obviously my boxing ability, I get cut too much, um, yeah. i.e. with head clashes, etc. It's well documented. Uh, I'm probably the most cut boxer out there. But he's... <laughs> That's why I try to just box and keep, you know, boxing is about get hitting and not getting hit. Um, I know Ben's style, people are saying he shouldn't be mandatory, this and that, but it's all opinions and, you know, opinions are like assholes, everyone's got one. Yeah. <laughs> are you um, uh, prepared that he could come in a different fighter? I know, obviously, because most of his career he's been a brawler, but there's always that slight change that he could come in a different fight there. Um, you don't know. You know, I could come in like a fight there. You know, uh, yeah. you know, I don't think he's going to change much of his style. I think he'll be working more on his boxing because, you know, I am a, I wouldn't say, but I'm a decent boxer. Yeah. I've got quite a good job and when I'm on form, you know, I don't think I'm out of beat. And, you know, I think my boxing ability is better than his. But, you know, he's got natural raw aggression and stuff through his father. Um, you know, people are saying, you know, he's had knockouts and this and that, but he's not boxed a fighter like me. You yeah. know, that that kid he boxed, who boxed last week, Pena, was like a journeyman record, really, wasn't he? Yeah, I, I haven't seen um, that fight yet. I know, catch up with that tonight, all of the fights. I, I don't watch boxing, you know, I watch it now and again. Yeah. Um, very rare I watch any boxing. Only when I'm fighting them, then I might watch them. You know, going through um, comment sections on social media, a lot of worry, people are a lot of sceptical that if it goes to a point of decision, um, being who he is, who his father is, and um, the status he has at the moment on his head, that you could get robbed if it does go to points point of decision. Does that worry you? No, mate. It was a very no fight. If I execute the game plan that me and Gary will put together um, and I do everything right on the night, I shouldn't see no issues of being robbery. I think I'll take it by a wide margin. But, yeah. you know, the, well, that is on the back of your mind. But when you're in there, that's the last thing I'm thinking about. All I'm thinking about is the game plan, what i got to do. Yeah, man. Because even though you've accomplished a lot more in your career, I would say a lot more than Ben, um, like you went, uh, went on about just now, um, he is a big name. Is this um, a boost for your status, a new name in the division? Yeah, most definitely. You know, I got offered fights, obviously, before this was announced. And I said, no, thanks, I want to Ben. Ben is a big name. It, it, it was, you ask any Joe Blogs from public. I remember him. You broke up a bit there, Chris, sorry. Mm-hmm. It went off, then. 
Do you like swearing? Yeah, no, don't worry about that, Chris. I'm, uh, I, I don't mind that, but... <laughs> no, but I was a guest. He's gone. Where the fuck's he gone? I was like, I swear it, but no, um... Where was we um, regarding it? Yeah, he's a name, isn't he? Yeah, man. So you'll obviously be back in camp soon. Um, are you rushing into camp now at the moment? Are you going to go hard into training? Or are you going to well, wait for a date? Obviously, this pandemic and stuff, I lost sponsors. Um, and then I, I've got to work, simple as I've got a young family. Um, so I was taking over. I was going up to Brett, up to the Mardi, you know, in the evenings, twice a week on top of working, and then I think last week I went back up to Cardiff, just officially like, no, I'm back in the gym, I'm doing, punching a bit, oh, anyway. Yeah. I'm well, well listening, is it? I just want to, uh, <laughs> I, I'm punching now, um, I'm getting four punching sessions, sessions a weekend, I'm getting four runs a weekend, until we get, we know the date is, you know, but eight week out, then we we'll, Ramp it up. I'm starting back with strength and conditioning um, with Joel Thompson. Um, he's that's back on Thursday. He's now starting this week. But, you know, I done eight rounds sparring last week uh, with that kid, um, Danny Ball. And, you know, I felt good doing eight rounds considering I haven't thrown a punch or got punched since my last fight. So you are feeling... You, I was going to ask, her, um, how did you feel doing that spar? You felt good, yeah? But I felt good. I think, you know, every close silver lining, etc. It's the rest I had off for, I think it was, I didn't train for six to eight weeks, maybe even longer than that, through work. Um, and it just recharged me. You know, yeah. all the things don't, they're not there no more. I might be 32, but I'm a very young 32. Yeah. But what what's a normal average day in the life of Chris Jenkins when he's in camp? In camp, it's usually get up, get the kids to school, have my brekkie, drive up to Cardiff, do a session up there with guys, and you know it all depends what you got planned. And then it's like I drive home. So all in all, just back and forth the gym is under one hundred and ten mile. So it's two, just over two hours driving up and back, and then. Oh, I'm have some scran. Um, leave, you know, kids come home from school, and then probably in the evening, then we just go up the mountains where I live. Go on a little four mile. It all depends what I'm doing. Sometimes I go on the bike and that, but then that's really it. Then home bed, and then same again, same again. We're very lucky in Wales that we got the mountains and places that uh, you could take advantage of. Mm, well, where I live, it's like. I don't know if we can see back up there. It's like all up there is all mountains and stuff all around me. Yeah. It's nice where I live. Um, fresh air now. Proper sheep shag, as they say. <laughs> Nick, um, you're, obviously, you travel all that distance back and forth to Cardiff. Um, yeah. At the moment, there's a lot on the news um, of Corona coming back for a second wave and stuff like that. It's got to be a bit worrying for you that, you know, camp is not cheap. It's, it's not free like what many people think. Um, so what, have you been given any guidance as to what will happen if there is a second wave? I don't have a clue, mate. And when you are saying about camping cheap, it most definitely ain't. You know, um, I'm lucky I've got uh, SP Motors, a good friend of mine, Sammy, has helped me out as well weekly. And I've also got Falco Scaffold and Danny Munn, who's helped me out with the fuel. Um, so it's a big, big, big help because... Driving back for a Cardiff plus my strength and conditioning sessions. It's like I'm putting nearly a hundred quid a week in my car. Yeah. You know, and last when I boxed John, when I was meant to box Johnny last time, I think I lost about two and a half grand, three grand from camp on its own. So, you know, it's nice to have some sponsors. It'd be nice to have some more. But, you know, through this pandemic, you just got to get through it, really. You got to the tough times and all that, but they don't last. Tough people do, don't they? Yeah. So on, on a positive note, um, all this money you're to put into camp in the end will be worth it. Yeah, hopefully, you know, um, I'm confident in my my boxing ability. I've been in the game long enough. Um, you know, I I I don't think I get the respect I deserve. Um, Definitely not. But it doesn't bother me because people have got opinions and they, they're entitled to them. You know, we we've all got opinions on certain people, certain fighters, and 
it's just the way it is. But you know, I'm happy. My my family's healthy. You know, we got roof over our head. I don't give a shit. But I know that come fight night, everything goes well. I'll definitely pull off the upset, believe it or not. Even though I'm the champion, I'm still yeah. probably going to be a dog. But it don't bother me. Good man. So is um, winning a British title outright, I know, is one of your main goals? Most definitely. If you look at back at... 2015, a box nurse um, twice. I actually dropped him in the second. I thought I nicked the decision, but so I went to the whole fights. Mo come on board. I switched him to Gary's. Next thing you notice, then I've won the British title, and then I've won the Commonwealth defending my British. From the Who Needs Me Club is that every fucker wants me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's you want. Awesome. It's nice, you know, it's nice. People, you know, are probably the most unpopular British champion out there. But like you said, this British title to me is my world title. I know where my limits are. I'm not like some of these lads out there who's fighting and thinking, I'm going to be world champion. And it's like, be realistic to yourself. So, would you never see yourself facing um, the likes of, you know, Crawford and is that completely out of your goals? Oh, no, obviously, we daft to turn it down. Um, yeah. But realistically, what I'm aiming for is to achieve something that not many people in my area would get anywhere near of, of achieving, really. So, yeah. if I can win a British belt out, I can keep my family for generations and... No, I've done something after you sent. Chris, you're the man you are, you know. Right. I'll um I lay it on me a day now, Chris. I know you probably got uh I know you got your wife and your kids to annoy, which is probably one no, of your my, favorite got, uh, um, hobbies. I've got my uh, bike out there now, so I'm gonna chuck a few miles out on the bike now, a little probably gonna chuck a few miles out on the bike up on Monk Dens. And then come home and then go to bed. Good man. Get that rest in. Well, Chris, it's been a pleasure as always. Thank you, Bart. I thank you very much for joining us and uh, I'll catch up with you tomorrow at the gym. No worries, Bart. I'll see you tomorrow. Top man. See you later. Ciao, yeah. Chris. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.